Hello, everyone. Uh, so my name is Amin, and uh, I'm a research scientist in the Facebook Core Data Science team. And today I will be talking about revenue maximization from finite samples. Uh, this is joint work with uh, uh, Ashraf and Omar uh, from Columbia University. So let me first motivate the problem. So pricing uh, is important across in practice across different uh, like industries. And one key input that is uh, typically assumed that is known is the willingness to pay or the value of the, uh, the customers or the distribution that the seller knows that this input. However, in practice, uh, this input is uh, rarely available, uh, which uh, creates the need for uh, like data-driven pricing approaches. Uh, so one approach is to uh, assuming that we have some offline data some samples, let's say S1 till Sn, n samples. And uh, one a question that uh, previous work have looked at is how many samples are needed to obtain like say near optimal epsilon away uh, performance compared to the full information uh, when we know the exact distribution of values. And typically this type of work show that we need uh, uh, order of one epsilon uh, like samples to achieve this performance. And the question there is, how should we find this best gamma uh, 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 to achieve this near optimal performance? A related question, which is more uh, general, is how many samples, not only to achieve near optimal mechanism, but to achieve, let's say, 70% uh, of the optimal uh, like performance or uh, any given level, uh, like level of performance, how can we achieve that? Uh, so this is where this work stands. And more generally, I will try to give a picture of uh, the existing literature and where our work fits. Uh, so here in the x-axis, we have the number of samples, meaning that the seller has access to, but does not know the exact distribution. And the y-axis represents the performance compared to the, uh, the, the optimal, perf uh, the oracle performance had the seller known the exact distribution. So the uh, well understood regime is when we know uh, like a lot of data and how can we achieve near if, or like epsilon away performance as mentioned earlier. And uh, there has been, and this problem is well understood. And more recently, um, more recent papers have uh, studied the, when the seller knows has access only to one sample or two samples. For the one sample case, uh, we know, uh, like, we, this problem is well understood. We know what's achievable. We know what's the impossible results. For the two sample case, we know uh, first achievability results. And, but however, there is all this green region between, let's say, two or above two until infinity, where we don't know any achievability performance. And a more fundamental question, which we're not covering this talk, but even impossibility results beyond uh, one are not uh, are still open in the literature. So our work will try to answer this grid region and give the first step to to explore this uh, uh, this uh, and explore territory. Uh, yeah. So as I mentioned, there's good understanding of our subquantic regime, but there's very limited uh, understanding of this uh, finite data or transitive behavior of uh, learning. Uh, so I will skip the literature. I already mentioned the main uh, papers, but I invite you to look at the paper, uh, the, the the paper online to uh, to see the related li uh, literature. So now let's uh, formulate the problem uh, uh, like formally. So we have one seller trying to sell one indivisible good to one buyer, and this buyer has some uh, value like some that is coming from some distribution f with support, uh, like uh, non-negative support. The main assumptions that we are making here is that the seller does not know the of uh, this buyer, but observe some historical data. The historical data in this problem will assume that the seller has access to some uh, previous samples, uh, S1 till Sn, and the seller needs to decide, given the samples, given the samples, decide which price or distribution of prices that this uh, seller will be posting to this uh, buyer. So this is the uh, like what the, the seller is controlling. And this is what we will try to focus on. So this is a fairly uh, 
simple problem to state, but however, as we'll see, it's non-trivial to, 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 to study. Uh, so given a mechanism, how are we going to evaluate uh, like its performance? So first uh, we will, so let's, we'll look at the revenue, what I mean by the revenue. So we, and the seller will post a price P and the buyer will buy with some probability uh, whenever their value is greater than P, which is F bar of P. And this is the expected revenue. And we'll take expectation, the first integral is expectation over the randomization of the seller strategies. And outside we take expectation over the samples that the, 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 the seller um, like will have access to. So this, this is uh, the revenue. It will be hard to judge if this is, uh, I mean, given a mechanism, if it has good performance. This is why we need to define a benchmark, uh, which is the Oracle benchmark, meaning that the, the optimal revenue, if the seller had known the exact distribution of this uh, buyer. And we'll use a competitive ratio approach, meaning that the seller does not know the exact uh, distribution. Um, so we'll look at the ratio, meaning given a, a, a mechanism and the distribution will, if this ratio, let's say is 100%, it means that the seller is able to achieve 100 uh, or extract the full optimal revenue. Um, one, the, the main assumption is that here we, are, we, we don't know the exact distribution, but we'll assume that it belongs to some uh, broad class of distributions that we will uh, define later. And the, really the question in this uh, work is, what are a good mechanisms and what type of performance is achievable with limited samples? What I mean by limited samples, like uh, two samples, three samples, 10 samples, 100 samples. Um, so this is the main focus of this uh, talk. Now that we have uh, formulated the problem, well, let's define this class of uh, distribution that we will be uh, looking at. So we'll be focusing on fairly general class of distribution that are widely assumed in the literature. Uh, one is the monotone hazard rate class of distributions uh, that has an increase in failure rate. And this includes a lot of uh, non-parametric -param class like uniform, truncated, normal, logistic one, and uh, others. And also we look at the regular class of distribution, meaning those that have increasing failure rate, uh, sorry, increasing virtual value function, uh, which uh, includes the MHR class of distribution, but also it includes more parametric class of, uh, of uh, distributions. And actually one, uh, our approach not only applies to this class of distribution, but we can, it applies to any alpha strongly regular class of distribution, which is an extrapolation or interpolation between uh, these uh, two classes of uh, distribution. And this class of alpha strongly regular was introduced in the previous literature. But in this talk, I will be only focusing on the MHR and the regular class of distribution. In the paper, we have uh, the more general alpha strongly uh, regular distributions. Uh, so now let's step back and think about this problem. So if we have a mechanism or, um, and we, 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 let's say we are facing the MHR class of distribution, then to evaluate this ratio, it's hard because we need to find first, like a large class of mechanisms that have a good and tractable performance. Uh, this is one uh, challenge. The second challenge that we have, it, which is the nature problem, this infimum that I was referring to er earlier, uh, the nature, when it takes the inf, it's uh, uh, optimizing over non-convex and infinite dimensional space of distributions. So traditional optimization techniques will might not be applicable here. So this is why it's even impossible a priori, given, even if we fix a mechanism, it will be hard to evaluate uh, like the performance uh, against in like let's say MHR class of distribution without the understanding of the structure of this class of problems. Okay, so now given these challenges and given the problem formulation, let's look at the approach that we did or we follow. So our approach is uh, like motivated by the one sample case. In the one sample case, the previous work uh, it has been shown that the reduction to multiplicative mechanisms is without loss of optimality. In other words, if the seller takes the one sample and multiply it, let's say by 0.8 or 0.7, uh, 
then this is this class of mechanism is without loss of optimality. So this class of mechanism has inspired us to extend it beyond one sample to to identify candidate space of mechanism to any n samples. So the way we generalize this is by looking at order statistics of the sample. One example is we take the median and we multiply it by let's say 0.8 or 0.7. And this is what we post for the next bio. Uh, so as mentioned earlier, this is for, uh, solves the first challenge, identify the, the class of mechanisms. But however, there is still a challenge is how to identify the performance against this class of uh, mechanism. For that, we do it through two steps. Uh, and the goal of these two steps is to uh, like find a lower bound on this performance. So the first step is we look at the contribution at, uh, for local contributions, meaning that we take the space of values and we divide to small, small intervals using the generalized single crossing property uh, that uh, for this class of distributions like MHR, and we find the, the performance against each small interval. Yeah. And then, so we have the contribution in each interval of or the performance of this mechanism for each small interval. Then we, co we combine these small intervals using a novel, uh, like factor revealing dynamic program. I mean, we use dynamic program techniques to combine these local contributions to get a global contribution. This is how we are able to analyze uh, this, uh, uh, like uh, the performance of this uh, class of mechanisms. Uh, so I would not go through the notation here, but at high level, we move from like, uh, like an infinite dimensional to attractable lower bounds that depends fairly on uh, like just a finite number of parameters. Uh, and so we are, have reduced the number of uh, like the, 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 the complexity of the problem. And moreover, is that these functions here are derived through a dynamic program recursion uh, or value iteration to be more specific. Uh, so, so this is like the theoretical results. Uh, I will not define that. My, the main point is that we simplify the problem. So what are the implications of the results? Before that, I would like to, uh, to um, like state first the known results. So here in each row, we have different class of distributions. Let's start by the regular class of distribution. And the, in here, for n equals to two, uh, the most recent work have shown that uh, there is a mechanism like ERM has a performance of 55.8% in the worst case against any regular distributions. But no other results was uh, shown for n equals to five, 10 or 100. So in this work, we first improve this performance and we show that there is mechanisms that uh, achieve 61.5%. And as a matter of fact, that this mechanism dominates the ARM uh, mechanism. And moreover, we show the first achievable performance for any a number of samples. And, uh, uh, as, uh, and we can achieve till, till uh, 65.3. For the MHR class of distribution, no known results were, was known before. So in this work, we show the first achievable performance for n equals to two, but also beyond that, uh, we, we show very interestingly, we show that already with 10 samples, the study can achieve 80% of the optimal performance uh, already. So now what are the structure of the mechanism? So in this table, I will just look at the last row. Huh? So if we have 10 samples, if we, the seller has access to the 10 samples, the mechanism that achieves this 80.4% is taking almost the median, the, uh, the sixth highest value, and multiplying it by 81, 0.81, and posting that as a price. This is the mechanism. And this will achieve like 80.4%. And as a matter of fact, what we show is that against this uh, class of mechanisms, uh, our approach is tight, meaning that there's no other mechanism within this class of order statistics mechanism that can achieve more than 81.81%. So uh, even if we focus on this row here, but uh, 
for illustration, but our framework is applicable to any other statistics, any uh, like deflation or inflation, meaning by multiplying uh, the other statistics. Uh, the main point I want to uh, emphasize here is that previous work, why we are able to show these results, uh, and because we, we didn't stick with the empirical revenue maximization. And we have even shown that in this regime, empirical revenue maximization, which is uh, near optimal in the asymptotic regime, is not optimal when we don't have a lot of data. And we need a different angle of, or different class of mechanisms. And this is, so this is one insight of, from this work. Uh, and this results or, or the implication of this result that the, the sh there is a need to uh, find the framework, modular framework than this work is to connect between uh, like bottom up approach, meaning that we start from this uh, low regime to this uh, high regime to connect both of them. Because as you can see, even if we have 10 samples or 100 samples, we start to stagnate here. So there's a need to, to connect them both. Uh, yeah, so as mentioned in the table, so the, uh, the samples can be uh, very uh, informative and operating with finite sample requires like different uh, strategies and the possibility for, uh, there is a need or this possibility for principled non asymptotic approach to data driven pricing. Uh, so to conclude, uh, so what did we see in this talk or this work? We we provide a general framework to analyze uh, limited data regime, meaning the one the cell has a finite access to finite sample. And we highlight the key drivers of the performance, uh, like from bottom up, meaning from low regime to high regime. Uh, how do we do that? We do that through a tight characterization of uh, like a priori untractable uh, objects. Uh, but this also raises uh, new questions now. As mentioned, one of the questions that I already mentioned is uh, how can we interpolate between this low and large sample regime? Another question that is not written here is is there a way to show impossibility results? Here we showed only feasibility results. Uh, another question that is also important is how can we encode additional information? Uh, for example, uh, uh, another inf uh, additional information can be buy or not to buy decision. And then we have uh, also another paper that uh, will be presented in EC uh, about the uh, optimal when we only observe the buy and no to buy decision. Uh, so yeah, I will pause here. Thank you very much.